Hey, what's happening everybody? This video, we're gonna be talking about data types. So if you guys remember, the data type is basically the type of data a variable can store. So when we say something like in x equals five, we're assigning the value five to x, and five is an integer. So we use this int keyword here. Well, there are a lot of different data types and we're gonna start talking about them in this video. Before we get started, this video is dedicated to monday.com. Monday.com gives you the tools needed to succeed with your projects. So if you need a way to organize what tasks still need to get done and the priority of these tasks, check out Monday.com. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. It's a great way to keep track of where a project stands and help you focus on what actually needs to get done. Plus the user interface is really pretty. All right, now let's get back to data types. The data types we're gonna talk about in this video are the simple data types. These are part of a bigger category called value types. This is in contrast to reference types. We're gonna talk about the differences between those pretty soon, but for now we're gonna start small, just get used to some of the simple types. So there's a lot of stuff here. It can be overwhelming if you're new, but I'm gonna make it simple. The first dot here, signed integral. This just means numbers that can be positive and negative. Unsigned integral is numbers that can be only positive. This one here allows us to store characters. So A, B, exclamation mark, space, so forth. I, E, 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 floating point. <laughs> These two, as well as the decimal data type here, are used to store decimal values. So if you need anything after a dot, such as 10.5, you would use one of these three types. Lastly, we have bool, which is short for boolean, which is just true or false. So lots of stuff here, but let's go through some of them and get some experience with it. So before we just start typing stuff out, I wanna make sure you guys understand that this value here, the term for a value like that is a literal. So when you type out a literal, it has a type. So five, for example, is an integer. C in single quotes is a character. C in double quotes is a string. You guys get the picture. Well, these literals can get assigned to variables and this will determine the data type we need to use. So let's go through some literal examples and we'll show you the different possibilities. The most important of the signed integrals is integer or int. This allows us to store positive and negative values. The unsigned version of this is uint, which works the same way, but it's not going to let you put a negative you can see it gives us an error. So we need to keep that positive. Also, this is just a mistake on my part. You can't use the same variable name. So you'd wanna give that something else. So let's just give this one A and this one B. And then we'll say char C, char is for character. You can assign that any character such as the value C. Now it's important that you use single quotes. Some programming languages do not distinguish between single quotes and double quotes. C sharp is not the case. Single quotes is always for a character. Then we have float. Now you're gonna get an error here and I'm gonna explain that in a second. But first I'm gonna write out double. When we use double, we do not get an error. To type float, it says, cannot be implicitly converted to type float. Use an F suffix. So whenever we need to specify a float, we have to use an F. This is what I'm talking about with the literals. A 5.5 is a double literal, a 5.5 F is a float literal. Most of the time you're just gonna use double whenever you need decimals. So I wouldn't even worry a whole lot about float. You can kind of just ignore it for now, <laughs> but it is important to know it exists. We also have decimal, which can also store decimal values. Same thing here, you need to use the prefix M. Now the difference between double and decimal is that decimal is trustworthy. <laughs> so when you get into more precise numbers, double can be a little funky. And if you do certain math, it's gonna give you wrong answers and so forth. Decimal should be used if you need exact precision, such as if you're working with money. So that's how I can remember the M, M for money. Lastly, we have bool, which is either true or false. And you just use the keyword true, no quotes, or false, no quotes. So looking at the documentation again, we covered all of these categories. We didn't talk about the different integral types, but we'll get into those when we deep dive into integral types. Main difference is just how big of a number it can store. Now, another type you're going to see a lot, but it's a little different, it's not considered a simple type, is string. It acts like a simple type in that you use it the same way, but the way it works and the way it's stored is different. And you can see that in the documentation, it actually falls under reference types. String is a very special data type inside of C-sharp. We're gonna get into all of that 
For now, just know you work with it the same way you work with any of these other data types, but internally, things work a little bit differently. Throughout this series, we're gonna be talking about how to use these different data types and all kinds of other types, because as you saw from that list, there's a lot of different stuff in here. There's not just these simple types. This is the starting point. In the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the differences between value types and reference types. Because you guys know anytime you can categorize things and group things, it makes it a lot easier to memorize and stick in your brain. So anytime I can show you guys some groupings, that's what I'm gonna do. So right now you understand the simple types, very easy to work with, you understand the literals. Now let's move on to the bigger categories of value types and reference types. This is something that is super vitally important to understand C Sharp. Please guys do not underemphasize how important this stuff is. The next video will make or break your future. <laughs> It may sound like I'm exaggerating, but I'm serious. This is important to understand when we're starting to build more complex applications. So don't miss out on the next video, guys. Please be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you then.